In this lesson from our core design skills series, I'm going to show you seven different methods within Photoshop to remove a background from an image. Let's go. Hello, welcome to Flux Academy, the online design school. My name is Matt Brunton, and in this series, we're covering some of the hard skills that you'll almost certainly need as a designer. Today, we're talking about removing backgrounds or masking elements in images. Now, this is something you have to be able to do in different scenarios, as I will demonstrate. You might have one way of doing it, I'm going to show you a bunch so you're prepared for any situation. In this tutorial, we're going to be working with Adobe Photoshop, so feel free to get that fired up if you haven't already. You can follow along by downloading the images I'm using. There's a link in the description for that. And other photo editing software is obviously available, although that was difficult for me to say. And there are online tools that you can use for removing images. I'm aware of that, but we're going to use Photoshop because it's been the industry standard application for 25 years so i think that's enough reason to at least do one video on it so we have this parrot in photoshop and we'll leave this file for you so you can download it thanks to kevin Mueller who's uploaded this to unsplash so let's look at some different techniques so first of all this layer is locked so i'm just going to click on this lock icon and it's now unlocked and what do we have here in the properties panel remove background what click on that if you're an old school photoshop user you might not know this exists there we go done end of video mm, not quite so it's missed a little bit now sometimes this works now this uses ai and that doesn't stand for adobe illustrator it stands for artificial intelligence and it's getting better and better which means that it's doing a real good job at detecting these backgrounds let's put a nice bright green in the background so we can see where we're at mm, is that the best contrast maybe blue and it's missed part of the branch but it's done not a bad job even going around the feathers here and whatnot it's missed off part of the beak but solid five out of ten there for photoshop to remove a background feature i should have duplicated this layer straight away i should tell you that you should always duplicate and edit non-destructively i'm going to delete the layer mask so i'm going to name this so this was remove background now what it's doing is two steps in one so let me show you those so if we duplicate and then we'll select the one underneath this layer it is selecting subject which is available here which again it's doing by that automatic uh, process the software is learning through many many images and it will get better and then it is masking so there's a little uh, button down here add layer mask you click on that and you can see and this is a tutorial for you know people a bit newer to photoshop but you can see that um i'm just going to make these layers panels slightly bigger so you can see next to your layer you have a link symbol and it's so it's linked to this mask so the mask shows as black and white and what that means is all the white image part of the image is what is being shown and the black parts are the parts that's being hidden or masked so it's a really important thing if you're just here learning photoshop which is why you should be here if you're looking for tips on uh, gardening or chemical engineering wrong video so that is what remove background does it selects the subject and then it masks it now we can't do more because obviously this is not quite right so that will often get you started and you'll see as we learn some other techniques how you can combine more than one technique and sometimes that will just work and it will be a a good enough solution for what you need and certainly as the software improves so i'm going to rename this subject so we can keep a record of what we're doing right let's duplicate this layer again let's try this again by the way this shortcut if you hold option and then click on a layer you can show that layer and hide all the other layers so this layer we're now going to try some other options so we see we actually have a select menu at the top here we click on that so we did select subject now we're going to try select focus area because it feels like this background which is very dark has just been uh, blurred out with a shallow depth of field so 
field. So now the focus area is automatically selected and we can see it's going around the para. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see the marching ants on the selection, but it's selecting the whole bottom part of the image, which if that's what you wanted, be okay if you just want to replace what was at the top. But let's say, no, we want to get rid of all this. We've got some issues. So you can adjust these parameters. So if we change the lower the in focus range, it's creating all these holes in the image. If we increase it, then it's losing the thing completely. So let's click auto again and it will go back to where it was three and a half. Um, and then we have on the right here some of the quick select tool uh, is, is ready to hand I should say so and there's a plus next to it or a minus which you might not be able to quite see but if you're following along you should be able to so we can add or subtract parts from this image so if we do select the take away and we select uh, sorry we click and drag just anywhere around here where we don't want it selected you see it removes that part but it's gone a bit too far so we can go back to the plus and I can sort of follow along where these feathers, these tail feathers are and see if it'll figure out and it starts to get more and more accurate. You could obviously zoom in. We've got parts of the branch missing. Drag this along and it starts to figure it out. So we're combining here effectively a quick select tool which has been open for us within this focus area dialog box and the focus area tool and we combine these together and we're starting to get a better result all right let's leave it at that because i've demonstrated it so you can go straight into the selector mask menu which i'll show you in a minute but i'm just going to click ok and we've got the marching ants and then we click on the mask again et voila we now have a selection we've removed the background but if we zoom in we can see some issues. I'm going to name this focus where it's a bit jagged. Maybe these edges, it's not very smooth. I know we're up to 25% here, but it's not super smooth here. And um, we, the beak again was missed. If we go back to the original image, I'll just name this OG so we know it's the original. We turn that on and off we can see the beak part of that is missing so focus area didn't quite get us there that's another option particularly if you've got image like this where it does appear that there's a very shallow depth of field a low f stop to achieve this sort of look so let's try something else so we had some more things under here so like we also had we've done subject we've done focus area color range so here and we can select we can sample colors so obviously we want the oranges and the reds to come through and we don't want this background color to come through now i would think with this image it's maybe not going to be so good because the branch looks so similar to uh, the background so if we try and add so again we've got the eyedropper here the eyedropper and then plus and minus so you can add more colors if we try and uh add uh, you can see like with the grayscale we can do if you want to see this bigger or you can have it in here the image in the dialog box selection on the main canvas or the other way around I I'm going to uh, go none there and grayscale here so if I try and add this it, you see more of the white is going into the background I don't want this ah and now I'm losing that so you can fight with it so if you've got an image where the color very much uh, is, is very much different than the background it can work but in this sort of scenario we're struggling that's maybe as close as we can get you can adjust these fuzziness again range have a have a fool with these things and get to get to know them and get get to sort of see how they they work that's maybe helping us with some of the the border we turn that up we're getting a little bit more we turn that down it's just selecting those little sample parts so maybe if we do massively increase fuzziness that might help 
So we do have a selection here, but there's like lots of missing parts, but perhaps the edge will sort of work, but I'm, I'm going to just leave it at that. This was color range. And I'll use the American spelling just for all my American friends who are watching. We love you. And you can see, obviously, it's missing these bits. And it's a bit fuzzy at the edges. This wasn't a great solution in this scenario, but in others, it can work. What else can we do? Well, you may remember if you're an OG user of Photoshop who hasn't, been using an update version or you've not used Photoshop for a while, you're coming back to it, then you may remember this thing, the magic one tool. It's magic. Select an area based on its color. Okay. So if we select the black background, it actually does not a bad job of selecting that portion. But I would say at the bottom, yeah, it's going to struggle. Now you can adjust these uh, tolerance uh, controls here so if we turn that up it's gonna it's struggling with where the feathers are we turn it down deselect and then do it so the magic wand it kind of sucks and it was it was a, a crude implement let's put it that way so there are better things in a similar area so we have the object selection tool so if you remember where we were at originally with the select subject this is what we got now whoops now if we do object selection duplicate this guy again so we have the object selection tool here and it says find and automatically select objects so we can just oh look at that we roll over and we get this uh, blue overlay that we can just click and et voila it's got the parrot in this case i'll just show you that briefly and it's actually totally gotten rid of the twig but i don't want to do that the other thing that you can do is you can have the object select tool and you can just you see it's got the different modes the rectangle lasso so you can just drag a rectangle and it will look within that so now it's figured out ah you actually want the branch as well and if we compare that with the subject it's actually gathered more of uh, the image perhaps it's brought in a bit too much of the dark actually and, and not gone around the feathers as well as select subject but it's done better with the branch so with a lot of these tools it can be better at one thing and and worse at another but that has uh, worked pretty well if we just go back I'm just gonna undo a couple of steps because I don't think the lasso version is gonna be any better but we can try so with the lasso you just draw around where you want to be I'm just clicking and dragging you go back to the beginning ish it'll make a selection and there it's found it and it's probably quite similar so let's call this object and related to the object and you might have seen that in the menu there is the quick selection tool and this one according to Photoshop makes a selection by finding and following the edges in an image so you get a little demo but we just need to click and drag along so we have this uh, tool selected and by the way the size of it here is at the top 70 you can make that larger smaller by dragging on this menu you can also make the edges of it uh, hard so they're totally solid or get this uh, gradual softening on the edges so you have options here and you either have the select add to the selection or take away from the selection okay so this size is probably good you can also use the shortcut the square brackets just hold it down and you can make that smaller and larger all right so something like this you don't want it too large you start going over the side it's going to do this kind of thing so let's just deselect make it a little bit smaller let's try again we'll just go around the the edges I've got this um, this yellow circle by the way is in uh, the screen recording that's not uh, part of Photoshop's interface. We drag along the edges. 
and you can just keep adding to it whoops you see so this has happened now we've gone over the edge and it thinks all this bottom part so all you do you can either go up to the top and select the negative uh, minus selection or you can just hold down option and drag and we can take parts away and then because we held it down it's gone back to plus so we can try uh, adding you can obviously zoom in and you could make the brush smaller and you could get more more detailed but but the software is it's not following exactly where I'm dragging it it's it's looking in that area and it's looking at each pixel and saying where shall we draw the line where is the separation between uh, the these objects and and here at this point I mean with the feathers I mean look at that what's the background and what is the feathers it's very very close so this is where it gets limited but we've done a decent job there except we've missed off the beak so let's just try and bring a little bit more of the beak in again look, at, look how similar this is so that is where you get into the limitations and so we'll call this quick because it's for the quick selection tool and if we go back to you know 50% get the whole thing in frame that's probably the best yet it's done a decent job not so good underneath but it's pretty much there if we just turn this on and off here you can see we've not quite got that branch I could have spent longer uh, with it so all those tools I've shown you so far are to some degree automatic things that didn't used to exist in for you OG Photoshop guys but they do now so now I want to show you a couple of manual things so the first one is the pen tool now if you don't know how to use a pen tool I made a video in this core design skills series that you can see here on the channel about the pen tool so check that out but the pen tool is very helpful uh, for this kind of thing and it's a common way of, of making selections so I'm not going to talk about how to use a pen tool because like I said that is in a different video and I'm not going to spend a ridiculous amount of time here because it's a demo and the whole point with this whole thing how long you spend on things it's all determined on how important it is how accurate you need to be if you're doing a cover for National Geographic you better get this thing <laughs> looking pixel perfect so if it's hanging in an art gallery take your time with it but if it's like an image that's going to be on social media for a day and then forgotten about and it's in a busy composition with lots of other things and you can hide it away and the emphasis is on maybe the communication or the joke or what not then it's not so uh, crucial but what we do with the pen tool like I say check out the other video if you have no idea what I'm doing right now uh, poorly with people watching me <laughs> you're doing a passable job come on let's say that um, is basically just drawing a line um, it's just mathematics it's vectors uh, that are just telling it where to go okay I'm gonna give up because you don't want to sit me just see me just draw with the pen tool so every time I click it adds a point so when you want to go back to the beginning you get this little circle next to it and now we've got that selected now so we can either go to make selection or just straight away mask which we will select and then mask and voila we have a selection here so obviously this looks strange because I only did part of it but what you can probably see along this top line is that it's a little bit better than some of these earlier versions where we had um, select the subject there was some pixels missing it was a bit kind of bitty bitty that technical term certainly with this focus one what you can see almost like hard pixely edges was if you use the pen tool you can get like smoother lines I mean we're, we're zoomed in 644 percent so it's going to look a bit pixelated if we go to 100 percent you can't really see that but even at least on my screen with focus at 100 percent I can see it's a bit 
I can see the pixels, I can see it's a bit rough on the edges, whereas with the pen tool version, you can smooth it out, especially when people aren't watching you. Thousands of people over your shoulder, I see you. Okay, one more, one more, one more. And the final tool is the brush tool. Now, the brush tool is something uh, that you might be familiar with from other programs. It's kind of like a paintbrush and you can you can draw with it. Hello. Oh, and it might be worth pointing out that I'm using a stylus and a Wacom tablet and this is the best way to do this kind of thing and it definitely helps you get more accurate than with a mouse. Even with a good mouse, I got a good mouse here, but the pen is mightier than the mouse in this instance. So with the brush tool, I find it's probably best to illustrate it in combination with something else. So let's take maybe the focus area, which was pretty jagged um, along here. And how would we improve something like this? So I'm gonna do focus copy. We don't need this one now. I'm gonna change this to brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the brush tool on the mask itself. So if you press D to go back to the default uh, fill and stroke here so we've got a black fill and a white stroke and then you press B to select your brush tool again as I was showing you with a quick selection you've got a menu up here where you can choose the hardness of the brush and you can choose the size of the brush I tend to go with quite high it can be 75 to 95 depends exactly on what we're doing um, but let's just start around there somewhere. And if you select the mask by clicking on it, so you see now I've got these uh, white corners on the mask instead of on the image here, then the mask is now selected. So if I draw, I've got white selected. So if I draw, click and drag with this brush, it's going to create new white areas. You might be able to see it's small, but a little bit there. And this means it's going to reveal that part, which is not exactly what I wanted. But you can compare with this uh, original image. Say, so, okay, maybe it needs to go down a little bit. So you can just manually brush this in. This is a bit large. And again, I'm getting this yellow uh, dot that's gone away now, which is from the screen record software. And just smooth the thing out a little bit. And you can, you know, you can be rough with it, and then you can, if you press Shift and X, if I can see my keyboard under my microphone, you can then go to black, which you see the fill and sw stroke are swapped. Say that ten times fast. Fill and stroke are swapped. Fill and stroke are swapped. You can then remove parts of the image that you don't. Oh, I've got the focus one still selected. Don't do that. <laughs> Uh, that you don't want to see so then these you can see how it's uh, can be smoother maybe here so you can get this sort of smoother movement uh, of the brush you see at this side it's kind of jagged and this side it's smooth and you can just smooth that out yourself and then, then look we've gone too far we zoom in we go for a smaller brush, we swap the fill and stroke, we get in there and you can really take your time if you want to and get these things down and you have to just make a judgment between using the pen tool and the brush tool and which takes longer. If you're going to do every single edge with the brush tool that's probably going to take a lot longer at the pen tool once you're, once you're skilled with it and that's going to waste a lot of time but it is good for for tidying things up now you see you zoom in too much that was good for the corner but now even though that might be accurate it's starting to look a bit jagged to the eye so you might just want to go back with a bigger brush and smooth that out I'll try not to get into too much detail but one more thing a couple of techniques you see with the beak how it's been missed out so I want to fill that in so there's two things I'm going to do first of all I'm going to rotate so if I just press hold down R I get the little symbol and I can rotate the canvas we get this compass sign because it's easier to draw at certain angles so this is gonna help 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show the original image, but I'm going to make sure I've still got the mask selected that I want to edit. And I'm going to, just by eye, with the white brush selected, draw along the edges of this beak. And then when we hide that, you can see, aha, it's it's gone along the edge on our mask and we can just draw to fill in the the other part and if you want to reset your view just press R and you get a little option at the top reset view let's bring that back to 50% and there's more work to do with that but we're getting towards a decent result already we could go with the brush tool now work on these edges that are a bit pixelated get rid of maybe some of these black bits because they look a bit too similar to the background and just tidy the thing up uh, with the brush and you could literally do even you know like hairs on a head if you imagine like how thin I mean we can bring this down to one pixel wide and you could sort of bring out this kind of thing now, obviously we're not doing that here because this is part of the black background but you can go as small as one pixel at a time if you want to edit with a brush and that's how you get ultimate accuracy and that's how like maybe fashion portraiture and retouching and things like that are done there you go a bunch of different methods from 100 percent automated to virtually 100 percent manual the key is to practice when you do that you master each technique and you get better at assessing which method is going to work in your particular scenario. There's kind of a speed accuracy continuum and you make your decision of where you want to sit on that depending what you're working on. So let us know in the comments if you learned something and if you are sharpening your design skills, maybe you just came to this video to learn something in Photoshop, then make sure you subscribe because we have new videos every week on the channel to help you excel as a designer. Until next time, happy designing.